local level, and we understand that. But uh, just keep that in mind when we're going through the budget process. If you have any ideas, uh, please step forward with them on how uh, we can make this more acceptable to the community and how we can address the anywhere from 700 to to a million dollar cut. Uh, appreciate it. We do have that list of uh, ideas what you brought forward. Uh, Mike, I think we still have that copy, correct? Uh, that the council set forth last year so we can work off that, but if there are any other um, new ideas that you have to save the city money and to make these adjustments uh, more palatable, please uh, bring them forward. Finance will be a very, very busy committee this year, and so will strategic, and well, just about every committee is gonna be very busy uh, with the budget adjustment, so just so you keep that in mind. Also, Alderman Warner. Would you like to address the council for a moment before we get started, please? If I could, Your Honor, thank you. Sure. I would just like to make the council aware and the public aware that there will be a benefit brought fry for Nathan here. He's a missing young man in Sheboygan. He's also my nephew. And there will be a benefit brought fry at the Elks Club 299 at 1943 Erie Avenue on March 1st. Uh, we're looking at uh, bratwurst, hamburgers, potato salad, beans, and all the good stuff that goes with it. Donations are welcome. There will be a DJ there that's donating their service, DJs. D&J DJ service, believe it or not. Rhymes very good with itself. But uh, if you could attend or you, or you want to make a donation, we would appreciate it. Uh, it's all going towards a reward fund, and hopefully Nathan will be home soon. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Walker. <coughs> Okay. Do you have a plan? Okay. <clears throat> With that, we'll call the 22nd regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. D. Berg? Here. E. Berg? Here. Doyle? Here. Manny? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Ports? Here. Schultz? Here. Stephan? Excused. D. Van Akron? Here. T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Here. Warner, Here. Weniger, Here. 15 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we accept the minutes of the previous meeting as entered on the record. Let's so move to second that we accept the minutes of the previous council meeting under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge of Allegiance this evening. Alderman Manny, we do have a Boy Scout back with us, correct? Leo, what troop are you from? Uh, 823. Okay. Um, I have to apologize a little bit. Our meeting tonight kind of ran into a school function, and most of our troop is tied up there, so we have one stop. <laughs> Would he like to lead us in a pledge this evening? Sure. sure. I thank you, Alderman Manny, for uh, <laughs> going to the next, next meeting. Confirmation of appointments. I was laid over from the last meeting. Peter Streisick is alternate member on the Board of Contractors Examiners, term to expire April 30, 2004, signed by the Mayor. And that can be confirmed, Alderman Van Acker. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the appointment be confirmed. Move to second that appointment be confirmed under discussion. 
Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Public forum? No. Okay, consent agenda. Consent agenda everything 21 1 through 20, excuse me, 22 1 through 22 27, excluding. 22 24 will lie over until next meeting. Alderman Van Acker. Your Honor, I would move that all ROs be accepted and filed, all committee reports be accepted and adopted, all resolutions and general ordinances be put upon their passage. Moved and seconded, all ROs be accepted and filed, all RCs be accepted and adopted, resolutions and general <coughs> ordinances be put upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. Sir, Honor, referencing 2224 and recognizing that it's going to lie over, um, just a couple of comments. Like everyone to keep in mind and think about this, uh, borrowing for a project greater than $11 million in this day of declining revenues. And the Journal Sentinel reported that the governor's budget was going to recommendation was going to be 7%, 920,000 for 2004, um, and 2005, of course, is unknown. Uh, losing that much in shared revenues is a huge amount to make up a loan without taking on more debt service. Um, the strategic fiscal plan does have that document in its committee uh, with the results or recommendations of the budget reduction items that the uh, council members put together in the survey. Uh, they do need to meet on that and discuss that and come out with some kind of recommendation. Uh, this should possibly be a, a part of their deliberations. Uh, we should be looking at alternatives possibly for uh, a new police station, uh, com combining with the county in some form or another, uh, looking at a site that's affordable uh, instead of taking a piece of prime commercial property, uh, being the Imperial Motel site, looking at a piece of property that's uh, either cheaper or uh, that we already own as a city and is already off the property tax rolls, uh, such as the Sheridan Park. Um, this is a huge undertaking and I think there isn't anyone that would argue that uh, the police station and police department does need a new facility. The question is, is it affordable um, and can we afford it and do we really want to uh, pursue that at this point in time until we have something, uh, some firmer plans in place as to what our future is going to be like and how our, uh, what our resources are going to be. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> a couple of questions along the same line uh, for information. I'm wondering about the origin of those dollars in the Industrial Park Fund. Uh, any guidelines and directives related to their use? Then also the uh, consequences of removing those dollars for future, future industrial park deeds. Okay. Is Rich here this evening? No. <clears throat> Let me, uh, Alderman Manny, let me get to Rich Gebhardt and I will get back to you on that. He has a scenario laid out and what he recommends and what he doesn't recommend. So if you can uh, wait, I will get back to you. Alderman Van Acker. Your Honor, just as you said earlier, this document is lying over till next week. So any questions you have, right. make sure you get to Rich and then we will discuss the, or can discuss the document in, in, in in its entirety um, next week. Um, but if anybody have, has any questions of Rich, let me know and I can make sure that you get the answers before next week. Alderman Van Akron, I was going to ask you also to have a strategic fiscal plan meeting after the governor presents his budget uh, within the next week or so, so we can move on this. Okay. Thank you. Okay, if there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? <clears throat> D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Ports, Aye. Schultz, Aye. D. Van Akron, T. Van Akron, Vanderwill, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Winninger, Aye. Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 2228, we will hold for 2255. 2228. Nine will hold for 2237. 
2230 through 34 to be referred. <coughs> 2235 by Alderman Berg, authorizing appointment of a special counsel to provide legal representation to two city employees relating to traffic citations they received while carrying out duties as employees. Alderman Berg. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, this comes uh, about uh, as a result, uh, as you mentioned, of uh, two uh, city employees in the course of their duty having an accident and subsequently being cited by a city police department. As you're well aware, ordinance violations are prosecuted by the city attorney. Uh, therefore, there is, uh, per statute, somewhat of an incompatibility of office defending somebody and prosecuting someone at the same time. For that uh, reason, uh, the statute uh, does call for, and the words the statute uses are requires that uh, counsel be made available to uh, employees who in the course of duty uh, are, uh, are arrested or have any claim against them. I believe two of the employees have requested counsel and uh, as our past president has always uh, called for coming to counsel when we uh, go outside uh, to uh, retain outside legal counsel, uh, that's the uh, basis of this particular resolution. I think perhaps uh, Attorney McLean can uh, answer any specific questions specific to what the statutory requirements are. I don't know if this covers aldermen when they have parking tickets, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> when you have that may be a ticket <laughs> question. <laughs> Alderman Burke, first I need suspension, and then we can get it, get it on the floor. Okay, I, I would move for suspension. Moved and second for suspension. Is there any objections? Are there any objections? Okay, Alderman Berg, hearing that. Thank you. Uh, and I would uh, request then that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and second, the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Okay. Your Honor, uh, uh, echo somewhat what uh, Alderman Berg indicated. Uh, although the statute, it's 895.46. It's, uh, the concept makes sense, and I think when the legislature enacted it, it really wasn't, I don't think the legislature was looking at uh, indemnifying employees from traffic citations. Uh, it used the term damages and costs, and I, th I think the, uh, the original intent had to do with the employees operating uh, in the scope of employment, getting in an accident, and the concern about getting sued by some third party who, uh, who may be injured in the accident and suing them personally and uh, you know, potentially the individual personally being held liable. Uh, in those cases, the legislature deemed it uh, reasonable for the governing bodies to indemnify uh, the employee as long as they were operating within the scope of their employment uh, for damages and costs. And also, uh, the statute provides that the uh, employee is entitled to legal representation if they make the request. Uh, up to this point, <coughs> to my knowledge, in the, in the past, I know uh, a number of city employees throughout the years have gotten citations while uh, on duty in the scope of their employment, but uh, at least it never got to me as far as making a request for representation. Uh, I think it's finally arrived where uh, two DPW employees have made that request. Uh, I brought it to council for two reasons. One is uh, I don't have any uh, budgeted monies to pay for outside council in any of my accounts. And, and number two, the statute says uh, to provide representation, but it says if you don't, which which means that I think you've got a choice. The statute reads, if you don't provide representation and uh, they have uh, attorney fees or costs, that they could then, then file a claim and bring an action against the municipality to recover their reasonable attorney fees and costs. Uh, I felt it would make more sense that uh, the council have more control over those defense costs rather than uh, given the employee free reign to go out and hire anybody they wanted and then uh, arguably come back and uh, seek recovery. Uh, get, getting back to the original intent, I think was to cover 
tort claims, third party lawsuits and so forth, but there was a case out of the city of Ashland, maybe about uh, 15 years ago. It's uh, kind of bad facts make bad law is what we, we like to say sometimes, but it's a police officer for the city of Ashland uh, came across in the course of his employment as a police officer an injured seagull and put it out of its misery, shot the seagull. And a DNR warden happened to be observing it, saw the police officer shoot the seagull and issued a DNR citation. And it's a forfeiture similar to a traffic citation, it's a forfeiture. Uh, the officer went to the city of Ashland seeking uh, representation. The city declined. Um, the officer went to, went to trial on the matter and was found not guilty. And then he sued the city for recovery of his reasonable attorney fees. And the, the trial court and the court of appeals said, yes, he's entitled to his reasonable attorney fees. Uh, it was the, the city tried to appeal to the state Supreme Court and the state Supreme Court <coughs> declined to hear the case. Um, one of the arguments that the city had in that case was that there was an attorney general's opinion that had been issued in the late 70s saying that the attorney general didn't think that this statute applied to forfeiture actions. Uh, unfortunately, the Court of Appeals directly addressed that and said uh, the attorney general's, you know, in the court's opinion, opinion is incorrect and it does apply to forfeiture actions. Uh, so you can't rely on the attorney general's opinion uh, and, and that's the state of the law as, as it is right now. Uh, I'm not aware of any other reported cases dealing with this. Um, some communities, uh, including, including Sheboygan, I think we've kind of uh, duck and cover in the past on this issue. Uh, and I've had communications with a lot of other uh, municipal attorneys in other cities and uh, nobody's really comfortable with this and everybody kind of tries to avoid it. Uh, some cities, don't write tickets to their city employees. Um, I, I think that's a mistake. I think you've got to uh, treat city employees like you treat anybody in the general public. If they don't obey the uh, traffic laws, you've got to issue a citation. Most cases, and, and these are examples, arise out of accident situations where a uh, police officer comes on the scene and does an investigation as to what the cause of the accident was. and makes the determination and consultation with our office as to whether a uh, citation is warranted. Um, so here we are tonight. We've had a request from two DPW employees. There was a third one that got a citation. We haven't had a re any requests for legal representation from the third one. As far as the uh, estimate of costs, uh, these are you know, traffic citations, uh, I, I can't give a ballpark other than to say I would think, you know, each case wouldn't be more than, as far as the defense attorney's time, three hours worth of time. And uh, I think the attorney's rate is under $100 an hour. Um, but that's, so a ballpark you're looking at total, probably between the two of them, $600 uh, defense costs. So. The options are to approve this, provide them representation, or, or not, with the, uh, the possibility that nothing would happen, that, that they wouldn't get counsel, or that they would, and then file a claim against the city for their defense costs. And possibly, then you, then you have to defend that suit as to whether or not uh, they're entitled to their defense costs. So, uh, choice is yours. I brought it to the council in this document because uh, I think you've got a policy decision to make here. I guess my recommendation is to approve this uh, and hope that we don't have too many of these. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Honor. Steve, have we had any, any of these cases prior to this one? Uh, We've had other employees get tickets, and to my knowledge, there haven't been requests for representation. Okay, and 
that's, and that's what I'm saying. So we're actually following the state statutes on this. And this takes us through. And, and if we do this, we're not only following the statutes, but it meets the letter of the laws we apply here. And we actually are treating our employees the same way we would a federal person out on the street by giving them a ticket. Yeah, and the concept of indemnity makes some sense. The, the, the court and the legislature are saying that employees shouldn't be concerned that they're going to be personally liable for all these things, that uh, they're, as long as they're acting in good faith in the scope of their employment, they ought to have some protection from uh, getting a whole bunch of tickets and having individual or personal responsibility. Uh, on the tickets. Now, there's nothing in the statute on tickets that, that addresses points. Uh, I guess I'd take the position that points are the individual's responsibility. The statute talks about damages and costs. Uh, further, there's, there's also a disciplinary procedure uh, within the city and with, within the uh, Public Works Department. There's a safety committee and so forth that would look at these accidents and make a determination as to whether any discipline is warranted. So that, that's on a separate track that would still take place. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Question to Steve. Uh, you mentioned that there are other communities or there are some communities that don't issue citations. I realize you also said you don't agree with that. Uh, is that illegal? I don't know that it's illegal. I think it may be arguably unethical in that you're treating city employees different than anyone else in the general public. Alderman Ports. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, I have a lot of trouble with this because I'm sure if I got a ticket doing my job that my boss wouldn't hire mean attorney to get out of a, a ticket. Uh, I guess my question here is, you talked about points not being covered, but the fine is, is if that's the case, is it cheaper just to forgive the fine and leave the points and not provide a representation? <coughs> yes, it'd be cheaper. I guess I'd rather do that than uh, set a precedent and getting attorneys. You know, that's up to you, but I, I'm not enthusiastic about this at all. I guess we would look at it, and uh, Chuck Adams is the prosecuting, but uh, I would, uh, we've talked about it, and we would look at it um, typically as we would anybody else. Now, I guess the good news is uh, you pay the fine for the employee, you're paying yourself. I mean, it's a city, city ticket, and the the forfeiture goes to the city, although there are, the state gets their cut too. Uh, they get their court automation fees and all the add-on fees. Um, but I, I think very often we look at traffic tickets and do knock them down, knock them down a, a point or so, to reduce the points, and also sometimes cut down the forfeitures and, uh, it depends on the circumstances, though. I, I wouldn't want to just do it because it's a city employee as opposed to doing it because that's how we treat everybody. Okay. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess as I look at this, and Steve, we're actually following the state statutes by paying for, these, for, for the defense attorneys for these two tickets. And at the same time, we're actually treating the city employees the same way we would any citizen out there if they were speeding. And to me, it's cut and dried. I think we should support the resolution. If we have a problem with the statute, then it's time to go to the state and say we need to change the statute. But right now, I think the city attorney is recommending that we pass this resolution. And, and I think we should hold our city employees to the same level that we would our citizens. And I think we should move with this thing and pass it. And I hope everybody supports it because it's the right thing to do. And if we need to change the statute, that's a different issue. <coughs> Alderman Van Akron. Steve, you said this is a state statute that's covering this law? Then we should have somebody look at that to make sure we change that. Got anybody in mind? Uh, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> might write down that number again. It's 895.46. Okay, after another discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Eber? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? No. Schultz? No. Dee Van Akron? No. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. 12 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carried. 2236. By Alderman T. Van Akron, Schultz, Perez, and Doyle, and Stefan, authorizing transfer appropriations in the 2003 budget. Alderman T. Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for a suspension on 30, uh, 2236 and 2237, please. Excuse me. Suspension has been requested. Are there any objections? Hearing none, proceed. Your Honor, the reason for suspension is the, this is uh, to get started with the um, South Pier and some of the, I believe it's some of the cleanup and things down there. We did get the bids back. It's about $100,000 less than what was expected. We can get in there early because of the weather. Uh, everything is good that way. Uh, and probably why we got a good bid is because of the way the weather is. Uh, so I would move that both resolutions be put upon their passage and file 2229 uh, the RO. Moved and seconded that 2236 be put upon this passage and filed the RO. After another discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weniger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. 15 eyes. Motion carried. 2237, along with 2229, by Alderman Berg, authorizing no, no, it. we just yeah. did that. We did those together. His motion was to take oh, two that's right. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. You don't call. Yes, I do. That's why. 2238 through 2243 lies over. Your Honor. Uh, Alderman Van Ecker. 2238, I've been asked to ask for suspension on that. 2238 is approving the cert, uh, purchase. Is there any? Is there any objections to Thank suspension you. first? <laughs> Hearing none, proceed. Is the purchase of the um, VFW and by the Redevelopment Authority on 811 North 11th Street? This had been brought into the council, I would guess, a few months ago. It was always waiting for the TIF to be changed and the, and the TIF to be redrawn. To include this parcel, uh, we also, if you look, there's some changes, but it was just date changes where the times of the sale and things, there was no changes in the actual meat of the, of the um, resolution or the sale agreement. It would just change, change the dates and times of when they had to be out and, and when we got them the money and things. Now that all that's in place, uh, they would like to get started as soon as possible. And, and we would like to get started so that that clock is ticking on how long they can be there and things like that. So then I'll move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and seconded by resolution 2238 be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. D. Van Akron, T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Wangeman, Warner, Wenninger, Bauman, D. Berg, E. Berg, Doyle. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. Twice in one night you suspended. Is that a record, Terry? Three times. Three times. 22, 24 through 46 to be referred. 22, 47 will lie over. Twenty-four. Go ahead. Didn't they? Twenty-two forty-four. Oh, I'm sorry. Twenty-two forty-four through forty-six to be referred. Twenty-two forty-seven lies over. Twenty-two forty-eight, along with twenty-two sixteen, by Public Works, recommending filing copy of document submitting a communication from. Hold it for twenty-one twenty-one sixteen. Hold it for twenty-two sixteen. Twenty-one sixteen. 
Okay, you got 2216. Oh, I'm sorry. We so will hold that for 2160. It's a matter laid over. Okay. 2249 by Public Works recommending filing documents submitted a filing document submitting a communication from Sheboygan JC Foundation requesting approval of various issues relative to their brought days festivals and granting permission to change the beer and music sales to end at 1045. Alderman Berg. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, prior to filing, I would uh, like to uh, amend the document to uh, have the music uh, beer sales to end at rather than 1045, amending that to reflect 1030. So this document is similar to the one that was also approved through public protection and safety. Uh, that, first of all, just make a motion to, to accept and adopt as it is. Okay. Uh, first, okay. Uh, move to accept and adopt. Second. Now you move. make your motion to amend. Okay. okay. And, and based upon the following motion, I would also like to uh, uh, make an amendment, uh, as noted, to uh, change the last word from 10.45 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Okay, let's move it and second it. Are you taking 2250 along with it? Because that was a dual referral. That's okay. so and also move to then uh, accept and file uh, 2250 uh, relating to uh, similar documents. Okay. We got to vote on amendment first. They should vote on the amendment. Okay. On 2249. And 2250. No, just vote on the amendment on 2249. 2250 is okay. Okay, I see it's 1030. All right. All in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now. And then the two of them together. Now 2249 and 2250 to be put upon your passage. Accept and adopt. Uh, accept and adopt. Accept and adopt. Right. right. 2249 and uh, also 2250. As amended. As amended. All, is there any objections? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. There we go. 2251 to be referred. 2252. By Public Protection and Safety, recommending denying beverage operator's license 5882 for failure to reveal all relevant convictions and due to a conviction substantially related to the license activity. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept and adopt the report of the committee. Move to second, accept and adopt the report of committee. Under discussion. Uh, yes, I'm just checking. Is uh, Ms. Pollock here to speak on her behalf? It appears not. If there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll? Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manning? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 22, 53, and 54 will lie over. 2115, along with 2133, RO by City Plan Commission recommending accepting the dedication of property from John Zelm. In 2133, a resolution by Alderman Warner accepting the dedication of 12.8 tenths acres located on the northwest side of Lakeshore Drive and Weeding Creek Road from Randall Koth and John Zelm. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion we accept and file the RO and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Move it inside and accept and file our own resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this land is given to the city by Mr. Koth and Mr. Zelm with no preconditions on its use. I believe it. Steve will confirm that. And I would just like to personally thank Mr. Zelm and Mr. Koth for their donation and wish them well. And I can guarantee you we probably will not be putting a police station on this parcel. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Longeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. 
Doyle, Manning, Aye. Moody, Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 2116 along with 2248, RO by City Planning Commission, recommending purchasing 0 0.83 acres from Wigwam Mills and transferring said land to Panel Plastic and accepting the dedication of 1.57 acres from Panel Plastic. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion to accept and file the RO and that uh, resolution be put upon its passage. Move to second to accept and file the RO and the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. Through a lot of work by the plan department and public works working with, uh, with Wigwam and the other companies, Panoplast, out there in the industrial park, we're able to get the retention pond built to help solve some of the flooding problems out there. So this will uh, make sure that that happens. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Yes. Um, my read of it, the, the one document that was held, 2116, correct, relates to this also. Yes. 2116 relates to that also, Alderman Warner. Yep, that's the one here. That was to accept and file that RO. Yes, sir. And then pass the resolution, which was it's 2116, 2248, and 2132. 2248. Okay, yes. that one I yep. didn't have here. We have another one in there. That's somewhere back here. To dig that one out. That was from Public Works. Well, there it is. On that, I would make a motion to accept and file the RC. Okay. That's resolution, right? 2248 is an RC. 2132 is the resolution, and 2116 is the IA. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, it's been moved and seconded. Pat, if there's another discussion, would you call the roll item? Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Bird? Aye. E. Bird? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 2117 RO by City Plan Commission recommending rezoning property located at 1839 Erie Avenue. Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion to accept and file the RO and that the attached ordinance be put upon its passage. Thank you. Moved and second to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this is relative to rezoning property located at 1839 Erie Avenue from UI Urban Industrial to SO Suburban Office. Uh, this is the property of John Travis operator of the Sheboygan Veterinary Clinic, and Mr. Travis wants to remodel and expand his business. And since the 1996 change of our zoning ordinance and map, this property needs to be updated to the new zoning laws. That's basically it. Thank you. There's another discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Schultz? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Ports, Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 2135, a resolution by Alderman Bauman approving the lease agreement between Winway Capital Corp and the Redevelopment Authority. Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and second, the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel, Wangerman, Warner, Aye. Winninger, Aye. Bauman, D. Berg, E. Berg, Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Ports, Schultz. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 2234, resolution by Alderman T. Van Akron, Schultz, Perez, and Doyle, authorizing transferring appropriations in the 2003 budget. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Okay. Moved and seconded the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? T. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangerman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Wenninger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manning, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Ports, Aye. Schultz, Aye. D. Van Akron, Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 2255 along with 2228, 
a resolution by Alderman Warner amending the Harbor Center Business Improvement District operating plan and boundaries. Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion to accept and file the report of officer and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Mm -hmm. Moved and second to accept and file the and the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this will add the new South Pier District to the present business improvement district of our downtown area. It will be a benefit to everyone down there and uh, the people at Great Lakes are in concert with this and they think it's a great idea too, so I think it's going to be a good thing for the city and for the whole area. Thank you. Thank you. Hearing no other discussion, would you call the roll? Vanderweel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. Steve, other matters? 2256 is a resolution authorizing entering into a contract for professional services for the soil remediation and berm grading oversight services. That will go to Public Works. Moved and seconded to adjourn. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye.